Welcome to IS MIRI 21's presentation on superbugs and amazing microbes. IS MIRI 21 is a European Union funded project under the Horizon 2020 program. IS MIRI 21 brings together 14 partners and eight third parties from Europe to collect, study, preserve, and distribute collections of microbes. These activities include the establishment of virtual collaborative work environment, transnational access, and education and training programs, among others. IC MIRI 21 will see the implementation of MIRI as well as its sustainability through activities that engage various stakeholders. Thus, IS MIRI 21 presents superbugs and amazing microbes to engage citizens. According to the Convention of Biological Diversity, biological diversity means the variability among living organisms from all sources, including terrestrial, marine, and other aquatic ecosystems, and the ecological complexes of which they are a part. This includes diversity within species, between species, and ecosystems. Following this definition, biodiversity has different hierarchical levels that start from the narrowest one related with the genetic diversity within the same species or population, moving to a more complex diversity among species up to the differences among the planetary ecosystems. Nowadays, it is possible to represent all biological diversities in one single tree and understand the connection among the different biological groups and species. The total number of species known so far reaches 2.3 million, and microbes such as archaea, bacteria, and fungi are represented in this tree. Microalgae and protozoa are also present within the metazoa group. The total number of species known represent the tip of the iceberg when we estimate that around 5 to 30 million of species can live in our blue planet. The biological diversity needs to be studied. The microbial diversity largely contributes to this lack of knowledge that needs to be discovered. Microbes or microorganisms are living organisms that are in general unseen by the human naked eye. This means they are extremely tiny organisms and the use of light and electron microscopes help us to see them. It is the reason that we call them microscopic organisms, that they have very different shapes, varieties and sizes. This group includes all unicellular microorganisms such as archaea and bacteria both formed by very primitive simple cells called prokaryotes, and others formed by more complex and evolved cells called eukaryotes. In the latter group, many unicellular protozoa and algae, as well as unicellular fungi called yeasts, are included. In the fungi group, filamentous multicellular microbes are called molds. Finally, a virus is a submicroscopic particle that replicates only inside a living cell. They can infect all types of life forms. Viruses that infect bacteria are called bacteriophages. Microbes are very diverse with different roles in the ecosystem. They can be found everywhere, even in extreme environments such as deep oceans, hot springs, and even glaciers. Currently, it is estimated that Earth has much more bacteria than there are stars in the universe. And bacteria that colonize man are 10 times more than the cells that compose the human body. Man has co-evolved with microbes, and this evidence is now confirmed. Since the human genome has around 37% of bacterial origin. This confirms that bacteria are older than man 
on the earth and human genome was able to incorporate these pieces of genetic information. Human relationship with microbes is intense and compulsory. And it is another example of how different microbes interact and colonize the human skin. Different groups of microbes are present in different locals of the body, helping the skin to function. When these commensal microbial populations are disturbed or imbalanced, they can originate health problems due to their absence or overgrowth. Similar situations can occur with the gut microbes inside our body. Although not all microbes are pathogenic and give rise to diseases, we tend to think that they are all bad for our health or the health of plants and animals. This is a mistaken thought. In fact, only a tiny number of microbes are real pathogens. A study reported that from 1,400 recognized pathogenic microbes, only 20%, approximately 350, were fungi. And within this number, only a little more than a dozen are primary pathogens. The thought that microbes are nasty for our health has given rise to the overuse of antibiotics. In order to ensure the food we eat is free of germs, we grow our livestock, and food with antibiotics. If we have a cold, we want our doctor to prescribe antibiotics. This behavior is creating a public health problem that is growing silently. Microbes are found everywhere on our planet, as said before, in the glaciers and rivers, in the roots of trees and herbs, in the intestines of insects, cow, or even our own. Their ability to populate a wide variety of environments creates a connection between the environmental, the animal, and the human health. This is one health concept. The fact that many of the same microbes are present in animals and humans as they share the ecosystem they live in. The One Health approach recognizes that our health is closely connected to the health of animals and our shared environment. Antibiotics are currently overused to treat and prevent various infectious diseases in cattle and in man, besides being indiscriminately added to fresh and processed food to ensure microbe-free products. This overuse of antibiotics has led to the appearance of superbugs, microbes that are resistant to antibiotics and cannot be killed with any known antibiotic molecule. Because we are all connected, superbugs arising in humans, animals, and the environment may spread from one to the other and from one country to another. Superbugs do not recognize geographic borders. If we continue with the excessive use of antibiotics as we have done so far, superbugs will continue to spread. The growing spread of superbugs is becoming an alarming problem. Humanity has abused so much of the use of antibiotics that it has been predicted by 2050, superbugs will kill 10 million people, more than cancer would. The only solution we have to this problem is to reduce the indiscriminate use of antibiotics. But let's start from the basics. What is an antibiotic and where do they come from? Antibiotics are molecules produced by microbes to inhibit the growth of other microbes. In this picture, you see two cultures, one of streptomyces above and the other of the happy bacteria below. When you place both bacteria to grow together, as is seen in the big plate on the left, you see that the streptomyces are producing something that prevents the happy bacteria from growing near them. 
in what is called the kill zone. The substance that is killing the happy bacteria is an antibiotic naturally produced by the streptomyces. Humans have been making use of this and other antibiotic molecules to kill microbes that cause diseases. So, for example, inspired by the global threat of antibiotic resistance and the need to develop new antimicrobial therapeutics to combat infectious diseases, the Joana Azeredo Laboratory at the University of Minho, Portugal, has been exploiting bacteriophages, viruses that infect bacteria and derived proteins as a new strategy to control bacteria. Preclinical data has already showed promising results for this technology. The proof of concept was established with the most dangerous bacteria called Acinetobacter bomani and is being expanded to other pathogens. Some viruses can be our allies to fight pathogenic or multi-resistant bacteria. So what are the benefits of microbial resources? Microbial resources share the raw materials of many biotechnological applications. Microbes are essential in the production of food and beverages, fine chemicals, enzymes, biofuels, vaccines, drugs, and heterologous proteins. They can also be applied as biocontrol agents of plants and animal diseases, as indicators of environmental quality and in bioremediation processes. Additionally, Microbes and their enzymes play a vital role in transforming renewable raw materials such as biomass, residues, and carbon dioxide into a huge portfolio of products. Accordingly, microbial resources play a vital role in biotechnology innovation and their exploitation and valorization is pivotal to boost bioeconomy. Microbes are the pharmacy of humanity. Penicillin is probably the most known antibiotic. It was discovered by Fleming in, in 1928, and the development of large-scale production was designed during the Second World War. Currently, beta-lactam antibiotics, such as penicillin and cephalosporins, are the leading anti-infection agent worldwide with an estimated world market of billions every year. Immunosuppressors such as cyclosporins and other molecules suppress the activity of the immune system and are given after an organ transplant to help prevent organ rejection. Without immunosuppressants, transplants would be impossible. Immunosuppressors are also often used to treat some autoimmune diseases. Statins are also among the most used medicines. They are used to lower LDL cholesterol with an estimated world market of billions every year. In addition, microbes are essential for our life because they are used to produce anti-cancer, antiviral, antifungal, painkillers, vaccines, insulin to treat diabetes, immunostimulators, and many other molecules. The use of microbial enzymes in various industries is increasing rapidly because of their stability, catalytic activity, and the ease of production and optimization in comparison to plant and animal enzymes. The guarantee reduced processing time, low energy inputs, cost-effectiveness, non-toxic, and eco-friendly features. They are currently used for any type of industrial production, such as the pharma sector, dairy and baking sector, for the production of beverages and animal feed, pulp and paper, leather, textile detergents, polymers, cosmetics, organic synthesis, and waste management. The annual turnover is of many billions every year.
the enzymes produced by microbes have changed our lives and we use them every day without realizing it. The term superbug is always used to underline the negative impact microbes ha can have in our lives. A very clear example is the antibiotic resistance, which is one of the aspects that has been covered very often by the press and the media. However, the number of bad microbes in nature is rather limited when considering the microbial diversity. The vast majority of microbes have a crucial role in our life, and for this reason, they have to be considered superbugs for the power that they have, which makes possible our life on Earth. One example is the role that microbes have in the food system. As it is shown in the slide, microbes have a fundamental role in the food system. They are involved in activities that are essential in agriculture, such as fertility of soils and protection of animals from diseases, in food production, such as food fermentations, and in the conversion of food waste into new materials that can be used in different industrial sectors. Finally, they are very important in human health since they colonize our gastrointestinal tract and interact directly with our immune system. Do you know that fermented foods are manufactured by exploiting the metabolic activities of microbes? As a matter of fact, they are able to transform raw materials such as milk to final products such as cheese that are completely different, with different taste, smell, and consistency. Fermented foods are an excellent example of how man has learned to exploit microbes to prolong the shelf, li the shelf life of certain very perishable raw materials, such as fresh meat, through their fermentation. Fermentation is a very ancient process and its combination with certain technological procedures like drying and salting allows for the production of safer and more stable foods. How else do microbes support humankind? Through the environment. Microbes control the main biogeochemical cycle supporting the existence of all hydrotrophic life forms. Hence, keeping in mind that marine biomes cover about 70% of Earth's surface, we have to remember that marine phytoplankton perform half of the global photosynthetic process despite amounting to only approximately 1% of global plant biomass. We monitor forest degradation carefully, but on the other hand, we have scanty information on the decrease of global oceanic phytoplankton density. A better knowledge on microbe activities is crucial in fighting anthropogenic climate change. We need to understand better how microbes affect climate change, for example, by producing and consuming carbon dioxide and methane, but we also need to understand how they influence the climate change and other human activities. We already stated how phytoplankton is crucial for carbon sequestration, but marine microbes through their activities also release carbon dioxide. Moreover, microbial biomass and other organic matter are converted into fossil fuel over millions of years. By contrast, burning of fossil fuels quickly releases imbalancing carbon and increases atmospheric carbon dioxide levels. Soil and water degradation is a serious problem all around the world. Pollution is one of the main causes of soil and water degradation and deeply impact on our daily lives. The contamination of air, water and soil represents a threat to the health and the environment that needs to be resolved efficiently. 
there is a growing interest in developing techniques to reduce levels of organopollutants from contaminated soils and waters by means of selected microbes. Bioremediation is an alternative approach that has recently received much attention due to its potential as a cost-effective solution and has been successfully applied in full scale for the treatment of contaminated sites. Bacteria and fungi are the main protagonists of bioremediation, being able to utilize carbon sources and transform most of the persistent organopollutants as various chemicals such as petroleum hydrocarbons, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, polychlorinated biphenyls, nitroaromatic compounds, industrial solvents, pesticides, plastic, and metals. Here's an example of a naturally symbiotic relationship between microbes and other organisms in the soil. Mycorrhizas are among the most important biological interkingdom interactions as they involve approximately 340,000 land plants and approximately 50,000 taxa of soil fungi. In these mutually beneficial interactions, fungi receive photosynthesis-derived carbon and provide the host plant with water and mineral nutrients such as phosphorus and nitrogen in exchange. Mycorrhizal fungi played a role in land colonization by the earliest plants. Together with the nitrogen-fixing bacteria and other plant growth, promoting microbes and endophytes and biological control agents, mycorrhizal fungi are used for different biotechnological applications, taking into consideration the urgent demand for food safety and low impact and sustainable agriculture practices. In conclusion, microbes are amazing and diverse living groups of organisms. Microbes can be pathogenic and harmful to humans, animals, and plants. Microbes offer humankind several services, products, and solutions, many of them not yet discovered. Microbes sustain life on our planet. Or, as Louis Pasteur said, life would not long remain possible in the absence of microbes. Thank you.